Hi, in this video we're going to continue on with a tutorial on this button application. And the goal here is to be able to click with the right mouse button. So we're preparing ourselves to create a game that looks like Minesweeper. Let me demonstrate what happens here. So I have a button that can be clicked and you can see it cycles through four different stages. So the button here has 0, 1, 2, and 3 as a status. Now, if I right-click on a button, it immediately resets it to zero. So if I right-click the rest of these, they all turn blue. So I'm right-clicking. You can't really tell that I'm right-clicking. But you can see in the console over here that I have a right-click event going on. So I'm going to show you how to create right-click using jQuery. And then you will be able to use this in other programs, such as a Minesweeper program that I just might assign to you as a student. So I've regressed the application back to where it was at the previous tutorial. So if you, have, you haven't done this yet, you need to go back and catch up with us. So our current application is a grid of buttons. And right now we can click each of them. And if I right click on something, I get the pop-up window, which is the Windows uh, usual default behavior for anything on a web page. So anywhere you click on a web page, you get this thing called a context menu. So we're going to suppress this context menu and we're going to turn it into an event that the button will recognize. So this is the state where we're at now, and we're going to progress now to a right mouse click. So let's start our programming here in the controller. So open up the controllers area and find the button controller. One of the events in the button controller was already set up to do a single button page update. So a partial page update, really. That event is called show one button. So we're gonna copy and paste show one button and that will become the new event with the right click. So I'm going to rename this thing as right click show one button. And it will do almost the exact same thing as the usual show one button. Now I'm going to just change the behavior so that the state of the button is set to zero. Now that's just an arbitrary thing. I could have set it to five or I could have set it to negative one. However, your logic of your game is designed is what you would put in here. So I'm just going to say set to zero. That's easy. So then the last thing that this controller needs to do is tell it which view to display. Now I'm going to use the exact same view that we had before, which is called show one button. But I have to put a specific default string name in here or override the default string name. And that way it, it gets the correct one. So now we need to actually go and capture the right mouse click. So we'll do this in JavaScript open up the folder called www root, find JS and choose site. Now I'm going to start with the previous mouse click event or the button click event. And I'm going to copy and paste the one that was there and comment out the original. So we don't need that right now. What we're going to do is change the event from a click to mouse down. So mouse down is slightly different. It means the event is triggered when the mouse is pressed. The click is, re is triggered actually when you mouse release. So they're almost the same. Now, when you do a mouse down event, you can get some information from this, para uh, from this parameter called event. The item that I'm looking for is called event.which. And so we'll put it into a switch statement and we'll handle each different mouse button in a different case. So case one is when the mouse button left click is pushed down. Case two is for the middle button. And case three is for the right button. Now these are arbitrary numbers that were decided upon and I'm just implementing what they are. So I didn't invent these numbers. So let's put an alert for each of these. So we'll say alert left mouse button, alert middle mouse button, and then the other is the right mouse button. And then the case statement needs a default so that way it handles anything that may slip through if there's not one of these three cases. And we'll just put an alert that says nothing. So I got the application running. Now let's open up the console and we'll check for some behaviors. So I'm going to inspect the console or inspect to get to the console. And we see our page is ready in the JavaScript console. So far, so good. Now, if I click a guy, you can see that it says the left mouse button has been clicked. Now, I have a middle mouse button. It's the wheel on my mouse, and so I can actually get a middle button. When I right click it, however, 
I'm going to have a behavior that I might not like. So the right mouse button was, it was sensed, but if I right click in the uh, area outside, I get the inspect option. So you may or may not want your right mouse button to behave with the, uh, the context menu. So right now it seems to be working just fine, but if I wanted to disable this, this context menu, I could, and we'll do that next. You may or may not need to do this next step. So the function that I'm going to add to the JavaScript is to disable this context menu. So in the document itself, I'm going to bind an event to a function. So this will essentially redirect the context menu. So the bind of context menu says, let's let the following function handle the context menu. Instead of showing one, I'm just going to put a console message. So I will say context or, or the console in the console will say right click and then it says prevent uh, context menu. So this is an additional step that may or may not be necessary, but let's test it out. I'm going to save and then bring back my browser and refresh the page. And so now anywhere I click on the page, the right mouse button doesn't work, but I am getting the message that shows here that preventing uh, the context menu. Now let's go modify our original code here for the left mouse button. I'm going to reinstate the uh, actual behavior that it had before. So let's capture the button number that comes from the button's value. So this dot val gives us the value of whichever item was clicked. Then we will console log it out. So that way we have a message to follow and do some testing on to confirm that it's working. So we'll say button number was clicked. And then I'm going to call the function again that says, do button update and it requires in the parameter to have the number of the button so the left mouse should work as it was before let's see if it actually does we'll save it and refresh the page all right so i got the application up and running now if i click on a button i get the messages over here that says what button was clicked and then also the html code is displayed in the console for whatever this should be so you can see that this was state number one and sure enough, one is up here. So every time I click a button with a left mouse button, I get the same be behavior as I did before because we are capturing a mouse down, which is almost the same as a click event. And then we call the function called do button update. Now I want to change the right mouse button to do the same thing and use a modified version of do button update. Now let's take a look at the code here for what do button update is all about. So it's an Ajax request to go to this event, this action, and then re, 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 fetch some new data and then render that into the screen. So it's almost exactly like what we want for the right mouse. The only difference is that the uh, action here is only the left mouse button. So we have a couple of options. One is we could create an, an entire new function here called do button write update maybe and that would call this event. So that would require copying and pasting the code and just changing one line. So there might be a little more elegant way to do that. So instead of using the URL as a hard-coded item here, we could pass it in as a parameter. And so that's what I'm going to do. So right now it has one parameter and I'm gonna put in here another parameter called URL string. And so that will be passed in as a variable that we can change. So now when we come back to the part where the uh, function was actually called, it says button number, we need to add the second parameter. So the second parameter, we just erased it, was called button slash show one button. That's the action, show one button. So we're gonna pass that in and hopefully it still works. Let's save it and test it. So I save it, refresh the page, and I come up here and click, and it certainly seems to work. So. I haven't broken anything, but I've added a new option where I can do a right mouse click as well. So I'm just going to copy and paste the code that was in the left mouse case statement and put it into the right mouse case statement and make some modifications. First of all, the action that we want to call is the new action we put in the controller called right mouse show one button. And then the console message should also have a right instead of a left. 
So I'm going to refresh the page. We got the message that says things are ready. Okay, for some reason it didn't uh, handle the Ajax request. It went into the regular uh, router and let's uh, refresh that again. Okay, so we'll refresh it again and try it again. So I'm going to click something and it looks like I've got a left mouse button working. Now I'm going to right click and we have an error. It says something down here. It says right mouse show one button was a 404. So something didn't work out. So let's go back to the code and see what might not work. So the URL here is called right mouse show one button and the 404 says that means that there's no action associated with that name. So I must have mistyped this. Let's go look at the controller and see what I actually did type. It was called right click show one button. So let's use that instead. I'm going to copy this and I think I put right click and right mouse is, a, is, a, is the mistake. Yeah, there it is. So I'm going to delete the one that was there and paste in the action that was in the controller. So that way I know I have something that matches. Okay, let's save it and try it again. Okay, so I've got the uh, Ajax working here for the left mouse. Now I right click it and it says here that the right mouse button was clicked and it switched the property back to zero which in my case is a purple button. So I'm right clicking on each of these and they immediately go back to the zero state. So it looks like uh, the left click will raise the status of the button by one and right click sets it back to zero. So there is the right click event and what you would do next with this is to take it into a more elaborate game. So for instance, Minesweeper. If you were to create a Minesweeper game, you would right click on a cell and instead of just changing the status to zero, you might have a status of seven or 10 or something else. And that would indicate that this button should show a flag or a bomb or whatever else you decide that your game logic demands. So the right click here is really the only um, technical point that we're trying to illustrate. How you use the right click is up to you in how your game requires it. So let's go on to the next tutorial here in C-Sharp Development and we'll learn some more.